There was Earl, the one who in Arda is called Iluvata, and he made first the Aina, the Holy Ones, that were the offspring of his thought, and they were with him before aught else was made. And he spoke to them, propounding to them themes of music, and they sang before him, and he was glad. But for a long while they sang only each alone, or but a few together, while the rest hearkened. For each comprehended only that part of Iluvatar's mind from which he came, and in the understanding of their brethren they grew, but slowly. Yet ever as they listened, they came to deeper understanding, and increased in union and harmony. And it came to pass that Yiluvata called together all the Ainur and declared to them a mighty theme, unfolding to them things greater and more wonderful than he had yet revealed. And the glory of its beginning and the splendor of its end amazed the Ainur, so that they bowed before him and were silent. Then Iluvatar said to them, Of the theme that I have declared to you, I will now that ye make in harmony together a great music, and since I have kindled you with a flame imperishable, ye shall show forth your powers in adoring this theme, each with his own thoughts and devices if we will. But I will sit and hearken, and be glad that through you great beauty has been wakened into song. Iluvata sat and listened to the music of the Ainur. For a great while it seemed good to him, for in the music there were no flaws, but as the theme progressed, it came into the heart of Melkor to interwave matters of his own imagining that were not in accord with the theme of Iluvata, for he saw the terrain to increase the power and glory of the path assigned to himself. To Melkor, among the Ainur, had been given the greatest gifts of power and knowledge, and he had a share in the gifts of his brethren. Some of his thoughts became part of the music and brought disharmony and chaos. Then Iluvatar arose, and the Ainur perceived that he smiled and he lifted up his left hand, and a new theme began. But soon Melkor's thoughts returned, and his power was even more violent and strong than before. The chaos returned into the song of the Aeon. Then again Iluvatar arose, and the Aeon perceived that his countenance was stern. And he lifted up his right hand, and behold, a third theme grew amid the confusion, and it was unlike the others. For it seemed at first soft and sweet, a merry rippling of gentle sounds in delicate melodies. But it could not be quenched, and it took to itself power and profundity. And it seemed at last that there were two musics progressing at one time before the seat of Iluva and they were utterly at the warrior. The one was deep and wide and beautiful, but slow and blended with an immeasurable sorrow from which its beauty chiefly came. The other had now achieved a unity of its own, but it was loud and vain and endlessly repeated, and it has little harmony but rather a clamorous union, as of many trumpets ring upon a few notes and it essayed to drown the other music by the violence of its voice, but it seemed that its most triumphant notes were taken by the other and woven into its own solemn pattern. Iluvatar arose a third time, 
and his face was terrible to behold. And he raised up both his hands, and it ran a cord, deeper than the abyss, higher than the firmament, piercing as the light of the eye of Iluvata, the music ceased. Then Iluvatar spoke, and he said, Mighty are the Ainur, and mightiest among them is Melko, but that he may know, and all the Ainur, that I am Iluvata, those things that ye have sung, I will show them forth. Come and look, behold your music. And he showed to them a vision, giving to them sight, where before was only a hearing. And with they saw a new world made visible before them, and it was globed amid the void, and it was sustained therein, it was not old. And as they looked and wondered, this world began to unfold its history, and it seemed to them that it lived and grew. Never since have the Aina made any music like this one. Though it has been said that the greater song shall be made before Iluvata by the course of the Aenor and the children of Iluvata after the end of days. Then the themes of Iluvata shall be played to right and take being in the moment of their utterance, for all shall then understand for his intent in their path and each shall know the comprehension of each, and Iluvatar shall give to their thoughts the secret fire, being well pleased.